Now, for more on this, we're joined in the studio by Laura, Laura Lopez Gonzalez. She's from the Becky Sisa Center for Health Journalism, the deputy editor there. Laura, thank you so much um, for coming in. Your center is always such a great resource on an ongoing basis, but especially when we have talking points like that in the week that we've had, a very big week for the health sector. Um, if we could start by focusing on the president's announcement today, the admittance publicly that corruption is a huge issue in the healthcare center. Do you think ordinary South Africans have an understanding of how big of an issue it actually is? You know, I think it's hard for anybody to sort of like understand and comprehend the, the level, um, but it's certainly something that civil society has been aware of, and quite cleanly so for, for quite some time. So the pre, the pre so the pre-step before today's announcement is really the formation of the Special Investigations Unit. Um, I had a similar forum, also brought in similar players. And I think what's important to note is that um, the cost of corruption, if you haven't really felt it personally, you have seen it in the news. So the Northwest strikes that shut down the entire province last year, that was about corruption. Um, we've seen people's beds being stolen. We see, we've seen children die at Landella because of corruption. So these are very tangible, real outcomes. Uh, there were headline stories, for instance, you mentioned some of them, but some of the state capture-related stories involving those mobile um, ambulances or something, I, th I, I forget now, I think it was involved the Guptas at some point. And those are stories that, that make headlines. But some would say, if you look at uh, what came out of the report uh, published yesterday by the Competitions Commission's Health Market Inquiry report, some would say that some of the biggest corruption has been taking place inside the private sector itself. Right. And so the Competition Commission really found high levels of concentration all over that market, your hospital groups, your pi uh, private medical funders. Um, and though their mandate wasn't to find sort of unearth criminal activity. They certainly uh, referred some real matters to the HPCSA for investigation um, and found that the private healthcare sector is itself very vulnerable to collusion, cartel-like behavior. And we did see evidence that doctors were inflating bills unnecessarily. Uh, the impact of this, obviously those who are privileged enough to have uh, private healthcare, there's the impact on their bottom line and what their healthcare is able to cover because perhaps they don't spend as much time going through all the line items to see what's being charged for the syringe or that procedure um, at the specific hospital for physio or something like that. But it's the poorest of the poor, really, that, that would be impacted the most by this, these different levels of corruption. Right, and Hao Tang is a, is a perfect example. So we have um, former uh, Hao Tang Health MEC Brian Shlongwa, who was until very recently still a highest standing member in the uh, ANC's Provincial Council. Um, and now you look at this um, health sector anti-corruption forum um, announced today. Uh, people saying every time they see uh, President Ramaphosa appear somewhere, he's announcing a task team or an advisory council of some kind. What is the hope that this forum will be able to achieve? So the health sector is acutely vulnerable to corruption because there's so much procurement. We have to buy medicines and services and equipment. Um, and this is something that I think even uh, former Health Minister Motsuladi knew very well. Um, under the NHI, we'll move to a system where your district level, where governance is arguably the weakest, will be in charge of contracting your private providers to help provide health care. So if we don't root out corruption now, um, we're looking at an NHI that would be implementable, um, at more mass corruption, so there's going to be more opportunities. So it's really important for this to happen now. I think the interesting thing about the president's announcement is figuring out what exactly a fast-tracking mechanism of whistleblowing looks like that he mentioned. Because, you know, Section 27 has done a great job in pushing for civil society inclusion, but we know that some of the other members of that uh, team, for instance, the Health Professions Council, which itself is under investigation by this SIU, um, and the Council for Medical Schemes have not been free of their own allegations. Um, where does it leave us then as we uh, tread ever closer to the first phase of NHI being impacted? There was also talk yesterday in the announcement of this uh, report by the Competition Commission that there'll be a lot of learnings from NHI. But for me, what that announcement yesterday and today's announcement opens up is it's such a huge task that NHI is faced with that before they can even put all these wonderful things that look great on paper, there is a broken structure um, that needs to be fixed so that we're not just papering over the, the cracks that are already there. Yeah. I think that's a, a big concern from a lot of people. I think it is important to note that no country who has ever moved to sort of an NHI-like system has ever been perfect when it started. Um, I think the Competition Commission was an important 
um, process to go through as a country, and it's given us this amazing evidence base to move forward and some really good and practical and internationally implemented suggestions on how to deal with these things. So I think that the what I would like to focus on going forward is really making sure that those recommendations are, are implemented. Um, uh, now, uh, I saw that you tweeted earlier today that the uh, public um, uh, a system whereby people can give comment, public comment uh, uh, process for the NHI is still open um, until the end of November, I think yes. it was. How important is that process? It's very important. So I think, you know, we're past, I think, a point in, as a nation that says, you know, you can throw out the NHI as a concept like baby with the bathwater, right? I think it's important now to really engage as a nation in the contents of the bill and get the details as right as we can. Because what we know from other countries' experience is that when you, when you don't get the details right from the start, it's very hard to fix it later. And indeed, the lives of uh, so many generations of South Africans going forward depend on it. What we are done, doing now will have an impact on generations to come. Okay, okay thank you so much.